Hello, this is Alejandro and welcome back to the men's lair, the real men's cave. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Zerotax Eagle Eye quadcopter, which is designed for surveillance and is equipped with the 30x optical zoom camera camcorder that is Sony CX270 camcorder full HD and 30x optical zoom plus the 3 axis brushless gimbal. So let's uh, first take a look at the quadcopter, talk about its features and stuff and components it has and then we will power it on and I will show you the radio controls, uh, switch assignments and how to control different stuff and of course we will also see how the camera gimbal works and how the zoom is working. This is the ZeroTech Eagle Eye quadcopter, which is equipped with the professional 3-axis brushless gimbal for Sony CX270 30x optical zoom camcorder. So brushless gimbal means ultimate steady video without any shakes, which is very very necessary for the zoom that you're gonna do on this quadcopter. Then it has the Gemini dual redundancy and dual GPS flight control system. Fully autonomous flight capable for 256 waypoints using um, Android phones like uh, here, Android phone GCS or Android tab GCS or you can use on laptop um, and also it has the emergency parachute, this dome or cylinder that you see here. So in case if one of the GPS is having glitch or and one of the flight controller is having glitch the second flight controller will take over. Now there's a thing that people say on the quadcopters if one motor goes down it's a certain crash no matter you have a dual redundancy system. Yes I agree it's a certain crash if one motor goes down but then that's where the emergency parachute will take care of your quadcopter. So as soon as the quadcopter tilts to 90 degree your parachute will open and save your quadcopter and your camera gimbal and your camera down there which are very very expensive equipment and of course the most expensive thing is your footage that you are recording. Uh, these are custom motors from Zerotech. Heavy duty huge motors 380 kV running on 60 amp ESCs and they will spin 18 inch propellers. So basically the difference between ZeroTech Eagle Eye stock setup and the setup that I am supplying, I am one of the uh, ZeroTech uh, dealer as well. So basically the difference between the ZeroTech stock Eagle Eye and this uh, Eagle Eye that I am supplying here is that we have the single operator unit while uh, ZeroTech actually supplies the dual operator unit. What is that? I'm gonna explain it very very soon. Also the system that we supply is a complete ready to fly with the data link and of course with video transmitter and OSD all installed. And once again it's a single operator system. We will also supply you a complete FPV system with this one and the OSD. Alright now that the, this difference is clear the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the camera gimbal and then we're going to take a look at the radio system and its switch assignments and what each switch does then we will take a look at how the camera gimbal and the quadcopter will work how the single operator system will work and of course how the video from the camera is looking like Coming on to the camera gimbal, as you can see, it's a 3-axis professional brushless gimbal. Alright, so you have the 360-degree pan, you have the 360-degree roll, and of course you have the 360-degree tilt as well. Which of course you don't want to do the 360-degree roll and uh, tilt, but still that is the feature uh, of the 3-axis brushless gimbal. And of course you can see the Sony CX270 with 30x optical zoom is supplied and of course it has the 55x total zoom that is the intelligent or digital zoom. Camera gimbal has its own independent IMU system and camera gimbal power and video system power all installed here so basically if you want to turn into dual operator system it is very very easy all you need to do is 
connect the attitude stabilizer for the camera gimbal to your receiver and configure it with the other radio system. For now, as I mentioned, this is a single operator system, so controls are going to be totally different compared to the controls offered on the stock dual operator system. Now, let me show you how the controls are gonna work. Let's take a look at the radio and switch assignments first. All right, so if you're going to get the Eagle Eye from Only Flying Machines, that's us, uh, you're gonna get the Futaba 14SG radio system, T14SG, that's a 14 channel digital radio system. Now let's uh, take a look at the channel assignment and let me describe each of these for you. The first thing that you wanna look at is the channel uh, five, that is switch SE right here, okay? When it's all the way back, that is your manual flight mode. So the switch E is basically the flight mode when it's all the way back, it's the manual flight mode. All the way up is the GPS position hold mode. That's where most of the time you will be flying in GPS position hold mode. And that's where most of the autonomous flight features will work. Uh, in the middle, that's the difference from uh, between the dual operator system and the single operator system on Eagle Eye. In the middle, switch E flight mode in the middle will give you camera control and take away the controls from the quadcopter. So you won't be able to fly quadcopter, but these sticks and the RS slider will become your camera controls. Very, very soon I will demonstrate how those are gonna work. But don't worry, your quadcopter will be hovering in solid at solid GPS position hold mode, and in case anything goes wrong, it will auto return to home. All right, so switch E all the way back manual, all the way up GPS position hold mode, that's where you will be flying mostly, and here you can always take control of your camera gimbal and the zoom feature, yes, zoom feature. The next is switch SC. Switch SC is gonna uh, give you the autonomous flight features. That means if you want the quadcopter, uh, if you have already set and uploaded the um, uh, GPS waypoints using the ground control station to your flight controller, you can use the switch SC to activate the flight path and your quadcopter will start flying the flight path and also the auto return to home features. Very, very soon I will show you once we run the GCS, you can see how the modes are changing. All right, the next one is at the right side, which is the RS slider, that is your channel seven. RS slider will be used to control the tilt. All right, here's the camera. So you will control the tilt with the RS slider right here at the right side. And also when you are in the camera uh, gimbal control mode, RS slider will control your uh, zoom, zoom controls on your camera. All right, before I put the radio down, the most important one is here, RD. Remember, clockwise, RD have to be at the right most where it cannot go anymore. This is your parachute control. If you put it all the way to the left, counterclockwise, your parachute will open. So make sure before flight, this is all the way right. Otherwise, as soon as you power on, your servo will remove the lock and your parachute will open and you will have to fold it. So during flight, if you want to open parachute, put it all the way to the left and your parachute will open. But be careful, your quadcopter should be flying at a very, very good altitude that is at least, uh, at least 50 meters or so more altitude is required in order to actually benefit from the parachute. But don't open the parachute, that's for emergency use. So that's it for the radio controls. And uh, now let's power up the quadcopter and let me show you how everything is working. Okay, right after powering up, you will hear a little buzz from the uh, servo on the camera zoom control. That means your camera uh, has got the power. You will see the LED lights on the gimbal controller. Now, if you look at the gimbal, it's dead. It's not working. So in order to get the gimbal work, your quadcopter should be flying. That's where the single operator system is. But let me show you how do you make the gimbal work. What you need to do is use the slider, that's channel seven, at the right side of the radio and move it up and down three times. So here we go. One, two, three. And now you have to calibrate the gimbal. So move it 360 degree on pan axis twice. Actually one time is enough, but I will do twice on the roll angle and 
on the tilt angle. All right, that's it. Hold the gimbal. And now when you put the throttle up a little bit, your gimbal will start working. So put the throttle up a little bit, your gimbal will start working. If you put the throttle down, your gimbal is dead. Uh, hold the gimbal in a steady position and put the throttle up a little bit and your gimbal should start working. And now your tilt is here. So you can see, camera is tilting up and down. All right, now, this is where you are flying. So you put it in GPS position hold mode and you take off, your camera gimbal is steady. Okay, see, it's balancing itself and you have the tilt control with the slider. Okay, so this is where you are flying actually. You have the control and normally uh, when we are flying in GPS position hold mode, your throttle should be always in the middle, always in the middle in order to have the altitude hold and hover hold or GPS position hold mode. So never put the throttle down to zero. If you put the throttle down to zero, that means you have landed and you put the throttle down to zero, the camera gimbal will stop working. So anyway, when you are flying, you are in the GPS position hold mode and you are hovering, okay, and using the middle throttle and you have the tilt control so you can actually have the video feed on your LCD screen and you are flying with this one and you have all the controls of your quadcopter using your sticks. Now that you have arrived at a point where you want to actually do the surveillance and use the zoom control, it is very simple. What you need to do is put the switch E in the middle, all right? Put the switch E in the middle, all right? Now once you put the switch E in the middle, your throttle, actually the rudder, actually becomes your yaw control. So you can see, you can pan the camera 360 degrees. You can have a tilt control on elevator channel. That is channel two, right stick. And you can zoom in and out using the slider, which I will show you very, very soon. Okay, so you can actually control the camera get your zoom in, focus on the target, zoom in, zoom out, and get a good footage that you want. Once you're done, you want to fly again, simply put the switch E up, that is in GPS position hold mode. Your camera gimbal gets to straight position, looks forward, and your tilt control is back on your slider, and your quadcopter controls are back in your hands. So this is what you will do. You will fly with the uh, in the GPS position hold mode, having a tilt control, okay, on the camera and a live feed from the camera. And once you want to uh, do the surveillance in certain areas, you stop there, you hover, and you put the switch E in the middle, and you take the camera controls. You zoom in, zoom out, pan, tilt, and once you are done, put it on the GPS position hold mode and start flying again. Make sure to zoom out all the way, otherwise your zoom level will stay right where they are and you will not have zoom control when you're in flying mode. So make sure you zoom out all the way. All right, so now let us turn on the FPV system and see how well is the camera zoom. Okay, so I will put the LCD screen here and I will turn the Sony camera on. So you can see the screen is there, it's turned on. Okay, so you can see the screen is on and the LCD is showing everything. I can move the camera around so you can see what's going on. We have the complete OSD. We can zoom in. And we can stop zooming, we can zoom out. So this is this is how very easily you can control everything using the LCD screen and live feed coming from the quadcopter even when you're flying. And when the camera is back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start the recording on the HD camera there, okay? And I'm going to focus on something. Let's see if I focus on my face on that camera and using the LCD screen. Of course, I'll put the LCD screen here. You cannot see what's going on, but you can see the HD footage later. So here we go. Looking at the screen, there is the camera. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in.
okay and a little bit up when there's a high zoom it's always very difficult to control oh, oh hold on right here now we are in a very high zoom and it's not very easy but the brushless gimbal controls are actually accurate we have to get used to them and you can see they're actually accurate very very nice all right zoom out let's find another target oh i found an egg okay let me move the camera a little bit on egg focus it needs a little getting used to there we have a happy egg sitting there very precise controls very very precise controls um, and uh, an operator needs a little getting used to when doing it uh, and I'm, I'm sure after they are used to it they can do a very very good job doing the surveillance from the air. Uh, brushless gimbal means you will have the gimbal uh, camera as steady as it is right there. Alright, so as soon as you're done with the zoom controls or surveillance, you can actually resume the flying with by putting the GPS quadcopter on the GPS position hold mode and your camera tilt control is back to RS slider and your video feed is still alive, you can start flying around. All right, once you power on the uh, Wi-Fi and data link, you can look at your Wi-Fi settings and you will have a zero tech on your Android phone. So connect to the zero tech, all right? And uh, and we will go to the zero tech GCS. Here we are, we'll go to the data, and we have the data coming. Flight mode manual, when I switch out uh, the GPS, when I move the switch E, it says auto hovering, that is GPS position hold mode. Okay, and back to manual mode. Once we are in auto hovering mode, we can use the switch C to change more flight modes that is auto navigation, follow the waypoints, back landing means auto return to home. So, all the way up, auto hovering in the middle, auto navigation, all the way down, switch C, auto return to home and landing. So if you have set the waypoints using the map, uh, I don't have Google Earth or Google enabled uh, Android phone right now uh, I have another one which is Google enabled and you can see the Google map uh, and you can set the waypoints and everything you also have lots of settings that you can do from here and on the parameters you can actually read the parameters of your current settings of flight controllers and change the current setting if you want one thing that you might wanna one thing that you must must look is the aircraft type and it should match your aircraft type otherwise on the takeoff you will have a crash so this one is a quad rotor yes one two three four this is a quad rotor okay so uh, you can also use the controls and fly your quadcopter using this phone right here okay and of course there are many more features on autonomous flight all right so uh, this is it for the long long video of uh, introducing the eagle eye surveillance quadcopter from zero tech surveillance quadcopter with the 30x zoom camera fpv system and on the on screen display osd plus the sweetest single operator system and uh the next thing we're going to do is find a suitable time now it's raining we will find a suitable time and bring the quadcopter out for the flight testing and we will see how well the zoom controls and the camera gimbal will uh, work and perform while the quadcopter is in the air. Of course, on the ground, this is super awesome, super cool. You have the zoom feature, you have the OSD and everything. But we want to see 
how well the camera gimbal, the steadiness of the camera, the stabilization of camera gimbal, and the zoom on the camera is going to work while the quadcopter is actually flying, fighting with the winds in all kind of conditions, all kind of wind conditions.